this movie, just like the other one, has elongated spaces. <laughs> yeah. With just silence, obviously, because it's a quiet place. You got to be quiet or the monsters eat your f- fucking mouth off. But every single thing, like MJ kept trying to eat her Reese pieces, and I was like, wait until the music comes back because it's too loud because it's like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never, like, same thing with the first time we went to see the first one. Anything you do in that theater is amplified, and it's always during important scenes. That's I always, only annoying I, I had to wait for it. any kind of, like, really loud part for me to cough, because I was afraid someone would be like, get him the fuck out of here! <laughs> COVID! <laughs> Shit! And I look around, like, I, I felt like people were going to be like, that shit's scarier than the <laughs> fucking John Krasinski movie. You wait to see some woman go from her seat from behind you. <laughs> I feel like I go. <laughs> uh, you going to die. No, uh, yeah, it, but yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, there were some things that, yeah, the elongated parts of it were, I think I think they could have cut out some shit. But the best part about it for me was uh, Cillian Murphy. I, I love that fucking guy. I, I'm glad that we got a sequel just to see him and his character flourish in this. And on top of that, I do know that John Krasinski had said before, because I was reading, I, I read this uh, review for it uh, from this guy in The New Yorker. And this guy sounds like he's had a tampon up his nose for 35 years because he was shitting all over it. But one of the main things he was saying is that there was no character development in this. And that they just kind of left all that on the cutting room floor. And that Krasinski should have originally stuck with his notion that it should have been a one off only horror movie. And that would have been it. And I was like, dude, I don't even know what he was watching. Cause I think that all over the place, there was character development. I just feel like it was dragged out in a lot of instances. Well, uh, from I, like, as far as like lulls in the, in the action or not even just the action, just the thriller part. I felt there was only one lull for me, but it was, it did stand out because it was right after the opening sequence, the opening sequence. And this is, they talked about this in the interviews that's in the trailers. The opening sequence takes you back to before the first a quiet place. So yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a quiet place sandwich and it shows like the normalcy there at a baseball game. And it shows what happens when these fucking things, I don't know if you can call them aliens or if, if you, if you call yeah. them monsters because they I'd did come, aliens. it looks like from the sky but at the same time it shows you what it was like before all this which is is it's weirdly cathartic too because of what we all just went through and now things are starting to get back to normal it's really cathartic to see that in a movie and i think they did that on purpose but no the opening sequence is so badass and like so and a lot of it's in the trailer but the way that the, they do it it makes it still special in, in, in the in the theater when you're watching it but as soon as that first sequence ends they go right into the the current moment it's almost mm-hmm. like halloween halloween 2 they go right into it and it's so yeah. quiet and now you have to be quiet and now there's a lot of walking in the woods and there's a lot of this and all of that and it really like i mean the movie starts with the dynamic up here and then it nose dives into like let's get back into shit so that like that sequence right there was kind of slow for me too but when it gets back going again uh, i i thought it flowed the rest of the way pretty well yeah i mean i i I don't i think the original was better i mean i do but i I still think this was it was good i mean it was a good movie for sure like it was a good sequel i didn't think there was a problem with it i mean as far as the like i mentioned the character development is there cillian murphy someone said it's it's a it's a pronounced with a k i don't know what you mean silicon silicon murphy i've always called him cillian but i guess it's cillian Cillian. that's what i said but anyway uh yeah i loved him in it i thought he was great and it made me real like when you saw the prequel part with john krasinski it made me miss him his his uh plaid shirt and his beard throughout most of the movie i really did miss that guy i wanted him in the fucking movie but either way i got real strong vibes toward the end of this flick though um I mean, I, some of you guys might know what I'm talking about that have played the game, uh, The Last of Us. It was just fucking like The Last of Us. I mean, it really, I mean, even the way they were dressed and what they were doing, it reminded me of something like that. Like, because there's a part that happens where, uh, some things have to go down for, for things to be fixed or at least temporarily fixed or whatever. And it's on this adventure kind of thing. I, yeah, dude, I got real strong vibes of, of uh, The Last of Us. And I wonder if uh, he, he watched that, if Krasinski had watched that before. Because I, 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 toward the end, really hardcore vibes. Yeah, I, dude, the way that he, I, you could see the jump he's made as a director from that movie to this one. I think mm. I, I might actually like this one better. Uh, I have to go back and rewatch that other one again. But for me, they're right there with each other. But no, the direction, you can see the shit that he's learned that end sequence. And this doesn't give anything away, but you guys know how in like superhero movies at the end of the superhero movie or old action movies would do this too. At the end, you got one, you got the main character fighting the main bad guy and you've got sub characters fighting other people. And the way that they'll go, like they'll show some of this fight and then they'll go over this fight while it's going on. They do that in X-Men movies a lot. They do that with like three things happening at one time at the end of this. But the way that they sequence, like the, someone will go to grab a gun and when they pick up the gun, you'll be in the, 
the middle of the next scene where someone's got another weapon. And the way he transitioned and the editing in this was fucking top notch, man. It was really I thought, good. I thought, I thought where he stood out the most. I mean, yeah, the thriller elements were there, and that was great. And I think he did a great job with that. But I feel like he's actually got a pretty good career if he ever wants to pursue that in action in movies because the action sequences that happened in this were actually pretty well done. Now, I'm not talking about because there's not just the monsters floating around that are a danger anymore. They, they actually introduced the world and opened it up a bit more as there's other dangers rather than just the creatures from the black lagoon coming down and trying to swallow your wiener uh, they got like well i don't want to give it away too much but the scenes that happen with uh cillian murphy uh, like those uh, like the music and then they does those moments with those actions that are overflowing with each other in another scene that really worked really i mean i, I don't know i could i could honestly see him doing a really badass action movie with like um stallone even i mean i think stallone could work with john krasinski really well and do something like old school 80s action or yeah. or that new new that I can't I can never remember his name from Crank, uh, Statham Jason, Jason Statham. Statham yeah, yeah. Chef Chelios <laughs> even though Jason it's Chef weird Chelios. they put Jason Statham up there with the Stallones and this and Arnie no but way. the thing about him though is like he's not first off he's not been around in long enough I don't think I mean he might be close in age but he's not he doesn't have nearly what you know under the belt those amazing action flicks like yeah. Stallone and Arnie are legendary <laughs> you don't approach the temple you may look from the outside and take pictures yeah. Jason Statham. I, I like Statham he's a nice holdover but he he wouldn't he's nothing like those guys but no uh it's and uh there's a question there I missed it. uh Bacon Jr great name by the way Bacon Jr is, is a fantastic name said will there be a quiet place three uh mm -hmm. and I can answer this without giving any spoilers there could or there could not be and that's just, I, the I'll truth. just I, I'm only based on what Emily Blunt said she literally came out and said this was a second movie in a trilogy well, there you go. A lot of people say it ends abruptly. I thought it ended on just the perfect point. I actually really liked where it ended. And even like yeah. the Rotten Tomatoes reviews we'll see in, there's the only complaint that people have is that the movie feels like it's part of, uh, it's a part of what would be a whole movie because they end it too quick. Yeah. I thought they nailed the ending. Like they just, they left you right off on that perfect piece. There wasn't, for, for the story they were telling, they 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 cut they, they told you what happened. You know what I mean? Mm. They, they fixed the shit. But uh, I love where the story went. I really love how they kept John Krasinski's character alive in spirit. And they didn't have to use flashbacks. Now, obviously, they did the first scene where he was in the movie. And he was great in that scene, by the way. Uh, and we'll have to talk more about that. But I like the way that they would speak about him when they would be like, you knew him. You knew what he would do. This is what he would do. So this is what we have to do. And the emotion mm. with which they, they delivered that. Because you're watching a family who just lost their dad uh, or their husband. And uh, this takes place right after it. So you're watching them going through the grieving process. But there's no time to sit around and cry. You know what I mean? Because like, these yeah. fucking things are still coming. And watch them navigate that was cool. And I thought that they gave Emily Blunt. They could have easily just made this Cillian Murphy's movie. And forgotten about one of the best parts about it. Because of his whole story. But what mm. she was dealing with, where they, they told, like, sometimes these movies, sequels, they'll be like, okay, we're going to take heroes on their own journey. This person's going to go here. This person's going to go there. And, like, you lose the cohesiveness of it. They do that, but they still make it work. Like, I feel like every all three stories that were going on at once really work together well. Yeah. Uh, Iron Wolf was asking, yeah, the creature design didn't change. I mean, it's pretty much the same way the creatures looked in the first one. So that they didn't do any massive overhaul with that. It's not like they spawned. Better maybe but it's it's still overall the same design and then somebody asked jt asked if you could eat while watching this yeah it's not like got any super gory gross out scenes there are a couple of jump scares make your pp come out a little bit mm -hmm. but not too much i mean i they did there was one where the, i think they overused it specifically the train scene i, was, I rolled my eyes a, a couple of times it's like i don't mind jump like scares they i don't fucking like them because they mm -hmm. piss me off after they initially scare a poop out of me yeah. but if they're overused i think it's lazy and I just think it's a quick way to get a, ooh, that happened once. And I was like, all right, come on, man. Like, I mean, a fucking toolbox falling down. And it's a goddamn quiet movie. I get it. But I didn't <laughs> like that shit. So I got mad at it. And I kind of screamed at John Krasinski in my, my, my head. I'm like, dude, I'm rooting for you. And now I'm taking it back to some points. The opening sequence, going back to that really quick. What I really loved about John Krasinski the, in the short amount of time he was in the film was that he was scared. Like, he was scared shitless. When these things first attack and they're at the baseball game and some of the scenes you saw before, but when it's initially happening, you know that scene in World War Z uh, where Brad Pitt, is the best scene in the movie, I thought, when they just show up, Brad Pitt's in traffic with his family, and then yeah. it's just like, oh, fuck. Like, I'm not, I wasn't prepared for this. The news didn't tell us this was going to happen. I'm in the middle of traffic and zombies are fucking hoarding everywhere. And how do I get out of this exact moment? And that, to me, adds a, it adds a whole other level of suspense because there was no preparing. We don't know anything about it. We're in fuck town, party of one, and the party is you. 
But watching Krasinski maneuver that, he didn't try to Schwarzenegger it. You know what I mean? Like, he was scared. When he's trying to start the car, you could see he looks like a dad who's who's got his kid there, and he's fucking freaking out because aliens yeah. are jumping around. I thought that was super intense and really well yeah, done. They intermingled uh, action scenes and thriller elements with horror style seasons on top of it really well. I think overall it's a solid film. I gave it an 8.0. Um and I, yeah, I mean, if you if you liked a quiet place, you'll like this one. If you if you just like horror or thrillers in general, you'll like it. Even if you didn't, well, you'll have to watch the first one. I mean, you got to go back and do your homework a little bit, yeah. but you could still go in and have a good time. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. And and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad I got to watch it in the movie theater. I'm not saying that it would have been any less as effective if I had watched it on streaming because it was still a solid movie either way. Mm -hmm. But it was nice to watch it in the theater again. Um, but yeah, I, I and I and I. I feel like they're going to do a trilogy just the way that this ends. I feel like because the way the first one ended, they could have ended it there and it would have made sense. Cause then you could have just assumed they could have let it like, let it be very, um, we don't know what happened, but we know that we have a weapon to fight back against them. And you would assume that they go out and they get other people to help them, whatever, but they didn't want, they wanted to continue the story into this. So now they're going to have to finish the story up and I'm, that's cool, man. I, I hope they do, but it's definitely a, it's a horror classic. I mean, and, but it's hard to even put it in horror. Because it's it's almost just like a, a drama thriller in a lot of ways more than and, and horror is just more of a background element to it. Feels kind of like I am Legend in that way, you know, like like mm -hmm. it's just it's, it's it's almost so action packed. It's hard to put it in horror. And 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 talking about the aliens really quick. The only problem I have, dude, with both of these movies, uh, uh, talking about the horror aspect is you never really see what they do. Like all they do, and it's scary. They're fucking freaky because it's loud, and that being in the theater probably helps with that too. Because when they pop out, it's fucking ah! mm -hmm. uh, but. The only problem I have with the aliens, uh, I thought they looked a little better in this one because they didn't have to show them so up close. In the first one, they literally got inside of their fucking ear hole. Uh, this one, they didn't have to do that. But they've been using Q-tips because that shit clean. <laughs> yeah, it was. But they, when they run around, they always do the exact same thing. They run mm. up to a crowd of people, they bitch smack people, and they bitch smack and they bitch smack. And at first, it's like, oh fuck what else is coming but it's literally like their only move they have they're like a boxer with a really good right hook and they just run around bitch smacking people you never see what they do to the bodies afterwards do they go back they, and make sure they're dead do they eat them or anything no, I, I think i think that they literally just they're like um i i like the, how i always imagine them. first off their body weight is probably unbelievably you know massive and then their claws are beyond shoot i mean if they, if they swipe you you're fucking dead i mean they'll probably cut through your sternum your lungs your heart with one swipe I think what they're here for is they're literally here like um, – and I don't want to use this reference because it's not like this, but I'm just saying like uh, in an Independence Day, those aliens' motivation for getting here, they're like locusts is the way that, that Bill Pullman described them. They go into an area, they suck up all the resources, and they kill everything around, and then they leave. But it also, if you want to get crazy with it, maybe another alien species drop these motherfuckers on a backworld planet like Earth and said – fuck it because they were like ravaging them at home and they found a way to gather them all up and throw them onto the earth that actually that's a really smart idea dude because but, see, but, I, but i'd rather here. keep but i'd rather just keep it vague like a fucking asteroid carrying these goddamn cockroaches come out of the sky and just randomly hit our earth yeah it's good to keep it vague for now if you do three movies i think you can keep it vague i think you might be right if you want to mm. go further you're gonna have to start reaching into that what are these things I'll, they, they're gonna have to bring in john goodman from arachnophobia to get rid of them <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, dude, I give it an 8.5, just a little bit higher than you. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really, once you got through that initial law after the crazy opening sequences, I thought it was, it was planned out really well. It's a very, yeah. very like tightly wrapped up movie, though. Like, there's not a whole lot to it. Like, uh, it's it's very, very simple. Very, very suspenseful. Yeah, they're, they're focused on the characters, and they have one little mission, and they've got to do it, and they, they, they draw that out. And the emotions there between the siblings, that one fucking kid was getting on my goddamn nerves, though, dude. Uh, do you know, I do, I'll Ooh, tell you what. Stop uh, screaming! I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, I, I'd smack that kid in the face. I don't even care if I'm an adult. <laughs> there's no, there's no more rule. There's no more rule of law. There's no more cops left. <laughs>